2022 is here and the energy is already feeling pretty amazing. In this video, you'll learn the numerology for 2022 and how that affects the energy. Then we're going to go into the three main themes for the year and how to work with the energy of the year to fuel major shifts in your life. Coming up. Hello, beautiful soul. That intro that you just saw is for my upcoming live coaching tour that's going to take place in New York on January 28th and 29th and in London on February 3rd and 4th. This in-person tour is happening to celebrate the launch of our premium coaching program, Heart Alchemy, and you'll be receiving a special discount to Heart Alchemy if you participate in one of these live events. These four live events are going to be pretty intimate gatherings with very limited amount of tickets. It's, we're going to be doing uh, live coaching. We're going to be doing on the spot healing, Q, live Q&A, and a lot of networking and connection with everybody that participates. If you want to hang out with me in person in New York City or London, I'm going to leave a link for you to click on in the description box below where you can buy tickets for any one of these events. And if you're thinking about it, don't think about it too long because we have a very limited amount of tickets for this for these events. They're going to be very intimate gatherings. So don't sit on this for too long if you have a pull to come hang out with me live. I hope to see you there. On to part one of the video, the numerology for 2022. So 2022 was a really, really powerful year. Year. Um, this is considered a master number year, and it's because of the presence of all these twos. So two is a really important master builder number. When we add the digits of 2022, um, we come to the to the num number six as the numerology for the year. So 2022 is a number six uh, year. And that means that 2022, from a numerology perspective, brings on a lot of characteristics of the number six, which are uh, stability, a lot of balance, focus on relationships and home. Uh, six is very much about that. It's about a lot of groundedness. Uh, it's a builder number, okay? So building things. But there's a lot of the energy of six and the energy of two is a lot about balance, groundedness, building things, um, and kind of this energy that's a lot more balanced than, for instance, last year, 2021, that was an energy of five, which was a lot of change, a lot of chaos, a lot of tu uh, tumultuous energy. Number five brings on a lot of change. Number six then comes in and gives a little bit more stability to the energy, all right? So 2022 from a numerology perspective is going to have a heavier focus on more internal stability, stability in the home, stability in relationships. There's going to be a focus on building things, but with a different energy than last year. It's going to be more grounded, more balanced than it was last year. Another important characteristic for 2022 and for the for the number six is responsibility. So that's a word that comes through a lot for the number six. And so 2022 is not just going to have this groundedness and this steadiness. There's more stability, but there's also a focus on responsibility, whatever that means uh, in your life. So we're basically moving from an energy of the tornado, which was last year's energy. So if you, if you can think of just last year, a number five year as being a year where a tornado just came through and it just completely decimated everything. And now just imagine that moment right after the tornado has passed when we open the door and we come out of shelter and we start to look around and see what the tornado has done. And it's that point where we start to rebuild the damage that was left over from a tornado. That's literally kind of a, a, a metaphor for the energy changing from 2021 to 2022 from a, a yearly number of five to a number six year. Uh, it's that rebuilding after a tornado has gone through. 
On to part two of the video, the three major themes for 2022. So when I was feeling and contemplating and meditating into the energy for the year, uh, there were three themes, three energy themes that kind of are the overarching themes for the whole year. And I'm going to talk about all three of them now. But these are the three main themes that you can see the focus of this energy is going to be throughout the whole year. Theme number one is called choice points. Okay, now this one, what this means is that we are having a bigger and bigger and bigger rift or wedge between what's known as 3D consciousness and 5D consciousness, okay? So 3D consciousness is that consciousness that's a bit lower. Um, it's, a, it's very fear-based. It's based on scarcity, on conflict, and kind of, uh, it's, it's a more lower density energy. And we're shifting more into what's called 5D consciousness, which is the future of humanity. It has a lot to do with unity, with cooperation, with love, with compassion. And so 5D consciousness is a peg above a 3D consciousness. And what's been happening since 2021 and continuing here into 2022 is there's, there's being a bigger, uh, kind of a bigger uh, separation between the two on the one hand, meaning that 5D consciousness and 3D consciousness, they're becoming more and more further apart from each other. But what's interesting and, and can feel a little counterintuitive, as I was feeling into this energy, my guides kept giving me the image of uh, Russian dolls, okay? So instead of thinking of 5D energy and 3D energy as being completely far away from each other where there's a fine line between these two levels of consciousness, the image that was given to me was of Russian dolls because really what's happening is 3D consciousness is contained within 5D consciousness. It's almost like they contain each other like Russian dolls do. So Russian dolls, uh, if you've never seen them, a, a Russian doll, they'll it'll have a bunch of different dolls dolls of different sizes and they're all kind of cased inside of each other. And so that's the image that was given for this energy, meaning that it, it feels like uh, on the one hand, 3D consciousness and 5D consciousness feel so far away from each other. They don't feel like they're, they're anything like each other. But on an energy perspective for this year, they're contained within each other. So 3D consciousness is contained within 5D. And this is a little bit confusing for me to feel into this energy. But what was being shown to me was that 5D consciousness is sort of a kind of a, a, a refining of 3D consciousness, a purifying of 3D consciousness so that it turns into 5D, you see? So it's, they're, they're contained within each other. Now, why am I bringing up this metaphor and why is it so important to, to think of 3D consciousness as being kind of a Russian doll, 3D consciousness and 5D consciousness? Why is it important to think of it as containing each other? other as opposed to thinking of these two levels of consciousness as really far away from each other. The, the usefulness of this metaphor is that we're going to have more and more important choice points when it comes to these two levels of consciousness because they are contained within each other and because we are sort of new to the whole understanding of 5D consciousness and what it feels like to vibrate in 5D consciousness. Because 3D is contained within it, like Russian dolls are stacked on top of each other, sometimes it could be easy for us to go back to 3D consciousness, okay? Again, because they're contained within each other. And so what ends up happening is for 2022, we have to have an enormous amount of awareness to be able to discern. The word discernment um, is coming through so, so powerfully for 2022 discernment is really important so that we're able to understand and feel the difference between 5D and the difference between 3D, the difference between that 3D fear-based consciousness and 5D, which is a more ascended love-based consciousness. We're going to have to be very, very aware because these two realities, kind of like Russian dolls, you can, you can be kicked into one or kicked into the other very quickly and sometimes without even noticing if you're not aware of it. 
One area that's been most emphasized when it has to do with 3D consciousness versus 5D consciousness is um, in the area of information. Okay, so a little bit of a side note. So the universe is built of information. You're surrounded by information. You're made of information. The entire universe is built of information. But my guides have been stressing two types of information that are really coming to the surface here in 2022 or continuing to surface. It already started before that. But it's a continued theme for this year. And that's the difference between organic information and inorganic information. So organic information is the information that is based, it's based on love and connection. This type of information is what you get from connection to the earth. So this is the, this is the information that the earth passes to you directly. This is the information that you get from your body. This is the information that you get from heart-to-heart -heart interactions with other human beings, okay, or other living creatures. This is called organic information. Then we have inorganic information. So inorganic information is fear-based. Inorganic information is more artificial in the sense that anything that is fear-based really is distorted. And so inorganic information, I'll give you an example. This is what can be found, for instance, in, in big machines like the media, okay? So what, what's going on there is that we're being fed information from big machines like the media, but then there's also money flowing into media. So for example, if you, if you watch a news piece on something, and let's say that it's talking about a product, and the news station is making that product seem positive, but then you come to realize that the news organization is being paid, a uh, advertising advertising money by big corporations to say a certain thing. And so then you end up with editorial uh, co control over this news organization. So this is a kind of just one example of what inorganic uh, information looks like. There's an ulterior motive to it. It's fear-based. It's not organic in nature. And so what ends up happening is inorganic information is filled with distortions. That's a word that's coming through very, very strongly. Inorganic information is filled with distortions. It's sort of artificial. It's not real. So sometimes what you can watch on the news using the media as an, uh, continuing to use the media as an example, sometimes what you watch on the news is true and sometimes it's not. So it's not all bad. But the point here is that there are inorganic information networks within big machines like the media that sort of feed us information that they want us to hear, not necessarily what's true. And so this is just an example of the difference between organic and inorganic information and how those things are being played up right now in 2022. Another example of inorganic information would be found on social media, for example. So social media platforms have the wonderful capacity to connect us, especially if we're far away from each other. But the underbelly of social media, the negative aspect of social media, was that it was really created to extract information and energy and time from you. Okay, so social media networks are made in order for you to stay looking at a screen, to stay online, to stay on the network, and to not come off. <laughs> they want you to stay in this virtual reality as opposed to the real reality, okay? This is the dark underbelly of social media, and this is another example of inorganic information networks, okay? And this is being really, really stressed. So what my guides are saying is that inorganic information networks are starting to disintegrate. They're continuing to disintegrate, and organic uh, information is coming up to the surface more. And we know this because we're seeing this all over the place. There's problems with social media platforms. There's been hacking. There's been all kinds of things. There's been uh, a lot of, of talk about... Um, you know, what social media networks do with our personal information. There's a lot of that is coming to the surface. And so all of these things coming to the surface is really what my, my guides have been talking about in terms of this inorganic stuff is starting to fall. People are starting to notice that sometimes what they see on the news isn't actually true because now they're realizing that these media organizations are being paid from corporations to say certain things and to not say certain things. All of these things are becoming clear to people. And so these inorganic information networks are falling and the organic ones are being, are being brought up. Now, what does this have to do with 5D and 3D? Well, you know, the inorganic information networks, this is really what's kept 3D consciousness hold uh, on this planet and, and powerful on this planet. And now as we're moving into 5D consciousness, it makes sense that all of this inorganic information falls. 
But this is where you come in, and this is the super important part of inorganic information versus organic information, and here's this pro tip for you, really important reminder, you're going to have to become more and more conscious of what information you are consuming and from where. Okay, so you have to become more aware, more conscious, really understanding that there are certain information that you're being fed that may not be true, and there's other information that you're receiving that is true. And we have to learn how to resonate with that information that's true for us at any given moment. This is going to be a super, super important skill, especially in 2022. So one of the best ways and easiest way to really master this discernment of information, again, the word discernment is coming through so much for this year, being able to discern um, what's true for you and what's not. Uh, A good way for you to start learning how to do this is to really pay attention to your sensations, to your feelings, and to your body, okay? But sensations and feelings are so important. Your body never lies to you. Your body is always telling the truth. And the more in tune you are with your body, the more you're going to be able to smell, to sniff out this inorganic information versus organic information, okay? So just pay attention to your feelings or sensations in your body as you're consuming certain information. So if you're consuming one information and it doesn't feel right for you, there's something off about it, that is not resonating as true for you, okay? So use your body as this beautiful mechanism to show you what the truth is for you. That's really, really a great way for you to start to discern um, this inorganic information and not getting hooked into it, all right? Another way of of kind of helping you out is to connect you more with organic information, all right? So an easy way to do this, so you get organic information from the earth, from your body, from heart-to-heart connections. So a great way to get used to feeling this organic information is just simply take your shoes off and take your socks off and just put your feet on the earth. Again, you're receiving all this beautiful, a beautiful organic information from Mother Earth herself. Spend more time in nature. Put your phone down, put your computers down, and spend more time interacting, having heart-to-heart interactions with real human beings, actually face-to-face with each other, not just on screens. Okay, so there's another great way of doing that paying attention to your body, doing a little bit of contemplation or meditation so you can feel your body and all of the sensations. This is connecting you more to organic information and allowing you to just fizzle away from the excessive reliance on inorganic information. Now, all of this discernment, knowing what is organic information, knowing what is inorganic information, feeling what feels like 3D consciousness and what feels like 5D consciousness, this is all important and it comes to this to this first theme of choice points because it's us really realizing that we have the power to choose where our focus is going. We can totally focus on 3D, we can focus on fear-based stuff, we can focus on inorganic information, on being fed um, information that isn't true, we can totally focus on it. There's no judgment, there's never any judgment from spirit. But the point here is that the choice points are super important for us because one choice is going to feel very different from another choice. The more I choose inorganic information, the more I choose um, being stuck in fear-based consciousness and 3D consciousness, the more uncomfortable life is going to be. Because 3D consciousness is really, it's almost like it's disintegrating under the influence of 5D consciousness, like that example of, of the Russian doll. So 3D consciousness is fizzling away. It's almost being absorbed by 5D consciousness. And so it's slowly starting to disappear. So if we stubbornly hold on to these lower levels of consciousness, our lives are just going to be more painful than necessary. Okay, so that's where the choice points come in. Be very, very choosy on the information that you consume, what resonates is true, focus more on organic information, focus more on being in a place uh, connected to your heart, this is 5D consciousness, focus less on fear, focus less on judgment, on lower density energies, and focus more on this high 5D consciousness that's really going to help you throughout 2022, just making the year more smooth for you. Theme two is called the art of slow living. (laughs) Okay, so what this means is that 2022 is bringing on this energy and it's really kind of whispering and saying, hey, 
you know, you don't have to be in a hurry all the time. <laughs> That's really what 2022 is saying. And it's like, we've lost this ability to live slowly. We've just, we've been so um, programmed to hustle, to do everything really fast, everything being accelerated, everything being in a rush. We used to know how to live slowly and mindfully, and we've kind of lost that. Technology has kind of helped accelerate our ability to kind of move and do things really quickly, and technology has made that a little bit worse. Uh, that's one of the shadow sides of technology. And so we've lost the ability to just slow down and pace ourselves and just take things slowly. And what 2022 is bringing, the, the energy really, the, the understanding here is that the energy itself is already super accelerated. It's part of this movement into what's known as the age of Aquarius. The energy is already super accelerated. It's becoming higher and higher. It's becoming more and more accelerated. And so basically my guides are like, you know, you don't have to add on top of the energy acceleration and you be accelerated on top of that too, because basically what that's going to lead is just, it's going to lead us to short circuit and burn out. So the energy is already accelerated, which means that we don't need to go faster. We can pace ourselves more. We can learn how to live life in a more steady, more balanced, paced way. Um, and that's a really important skill for us to relearn. Generations past used to know how to do this. This is a really important skill that we should learn, not just for 2022, but it's a big theme for 2022, but even moving forward. But since this video is about 2022, remember throughout the year to pace yourself, to learn how to live slowly, to not be in a rush all the time, to kind of remove yourself from this culture of hustle. There's still a really, really strong predominance of the hustle culture, especially in Western cultures. And it's really important to understand in these accelerated, accelerated energies, and here's a pro tip for you. Okay. So here's a pro tip. Ding, ding. You don't need to hustle in order to get things done in this type of new energy. Okay. So the, the times of hustling, they can be put behind us and we can learn how to work with these more accelerated energies, these more ascended energies. We can learn how to work more efficiently with these energies without having to hustle and burn out. So here are some words that, that kind of, um, that are a good way of explaining what the art of slow living is about. Okay. So kind of take in the energies of these words and, and start to train yourself to slow down a little bit. All right. So the words for, uh, for living slowly or slow living is, um, you know, taking time, groundedness, steadiness, patience, and clarity. Okay. So, so imagine that if you're trying to build something, imagine if I'm trying to build a house and, and again, 2022 is that master, uh, two, it's a master builder year. And so if I'm trying to build something, think about just the idea of trying to build a house and I'm, I'm just in a rush. I don't have a plan. I don't even have a blueprint. I don't know how I'm going to build the house, but I'm just going to rush and I'm going to do it quickly and fast and quickly and fast. If you've ever met a house that's been, that's been built in too much of a rush, you've met a house that is poorly constructed, <laughs> right? Because rushing things like building a house can really lead to fundamental building problems. And then you have a ton of problems in your house. You walk in the house and the sink was supposed to be over there and now it's over there. And, and why? Because things were done in a rush. And when things are done in a rush, details are missing. You don't have clarity. And so that's a good kind of understanding of what it means by, by having this art of slow living. It doesn't mean that you don't do things. It doesn't mean that things don't get done. It just means that things are done more meticulously in a steady fashion. There's no rush. There's no hurry. You still get stuff done, but you get stuff done with more groundedness, more mindfulness, more patience, and a lot more clarity on where you're going. I love to cultivate this art of moving slowly. This, this, you know, I'm, I'm talking about this but this hasn't been a particularly easy skill for me to learn. I'm, I'm a Sagittarius with a Sagittarius rising. So I have a lot of fire energy and fire energy just wants to do, 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 do constantly move. So this has been something that I've really had to learn and train in myself. It's that art of just slowing down. And I love to, to do this by actually I'll, I'll put in specific blocks in my day of just relax and, and, and slow down time. I'll actually block it into my day and I'll do a uh, certain activity activities, deliberately slowing them down. So I will deliberately slow down activities like, um, you know, brushing my teeth slower, cooking food slower, 
eating slower. So I'll use my activities of every day. I'll slow them down so that I become mindful. And that just gives me a little bit more training on the art of just moving slowly. It doesn't always work because sometimes my fire energy kicks in and I start accelerating again. But what I've been noticing is when I get into this hustle, move, 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 do, do, do energy, I don't feel good. I immediately feel off, off center. I feel tired. And so it's sort of like the universe is helping me understand and work with this energy and slow me down in a way that my body will tell me. All right. So the art of slow living is coming through so strongly for 2022. So this will be a great opportunity for you to learn how to do this. On to theme three for the year, and it's called creating with ease. So my guides have been stressing this a lot, even before 2020. 22. This has been stressed, but it's coming in very, very strongly with 2022. And it has to do with the shift from 3D consciousness to 5D consciousness. So in 3D consciousness, doing life was just a little bit harder. So it involved more struggle. Okay. So 3D consciousness is all about struggle. You have to, you have to drive yourself forward to materialize your dreams. You have to hustle. You have to basically struggle. So there's, there's kind of struggle imbued inside of 3D consciousness. Well, once you start getting into 5D consciousness, once you start learning how to work with these new, more accelerated energies, what ends up happening is that if you bring what you learned in 3D consciousness and you try to apply it in 5D consciousness, it won't work. And so the idea here is that you don't need to struggle in order to live in 5D consciousness. It's, it's a totally different paradigm. There's more ease. You can live life and you can create your dreams and materialize your dreams, but you can do it with more ease than we were doing before. This is really, really emphasized for 2022. So it's almost like we're slowing down that second theme. We're slowing down a little bit, but we're not stopping. We're still materializing our dreams, but we're just doing it from a completely different paradigm that we were doing before. It doesn't have to be a paradigm of struggle. It doesn't have to be a paradigm of getting things done the hard way. Okay. And this, this is, this is something that whether we realize it or not, it's so heavily imbued in ourselves. And I'm going to give you an example of, of this may, you may resonate with this, just the difference of what's going on in 3d consciousness and what we even value and what's imbued in us, what's programmed in us. So if you'll notice, and this is still true to this day, the people that we admire the most are people that come from rags to riches, right? Like we love to hear those stories of people that were dirt poor, had absolutely nothing. And then through sheer effort, they made it to millionaires or billionaires. So we really admire people who have these rags to riches or, you know, like pain to triumph kind of stories. But then when we encounter people that, for example, have inherited a lot of money. <laughs> so when we are attitudes towards people that have inherited a lot of money without doing anything to get that money, we don't have a positive opinion <laughs> usually of, of people who, who have come from like the silver, we call it the silver spoon or, you know, we have different terms. Terms, but you can see that a person that's born into money is very treated and seen very differently than a person that rose from rags to riches. Okay. So you see what's going on here. It's almost like we, in order for us to admire someone, they have to be required to go through crap and to have all these challenges and to be able to rise from very difficult circumstances. In 5D consciousness, what's the problem? There's, there's no problem whatsoever if someone's born into money. If someone one ha gets something without exerting any effort, there's no inherent judgment here. We can all materialize things with more ease. And that's the point here is to kind of let go of any kind of templates or beliefs that we have in us that good things have to come the hard way. <laughs> they don't. <laughs> they don't. Good things don't have to come the hard way. You can get good things through ease also, all right? And this is being really, really emphasized. This is a very, very big shift in paradigm. You do not have to really struggle. You don't have to go through hell in a handbasket in order to materialize your dreams. You can materialize your life. You can live your life with a lot more ease and a lot more flow. And this has a lot to do with us understanding that we're constantly guided and loved by the universe and we're in a dance with the 
universe. We're never doing this alone. And so if we have this understanding, we can live life with a lot more ease, with a different energy. And so we let go of these 3D templates that tell us that good things have to be done the hard way. Okay, this is a really important theme. This is an important third theme to just learn how to go with the flow, to be in ease a lot more, to materialize your dreams with a lot more ease and releasing any kind of hustle energy, any kind of uh, struggle energy that we may have, okay? Especially beliefs around this. Now, learning to live live with ease, another way of saying this is that uh, this is a very heart-centered kind of energy. So it's learning to live with joy and light-heartedness. That's the term, ding, ding. The term is light-heartedness. That's another way of saying living with ease. So not everything has to be difficult. Now, I want to leave a kind of a, a, a special side note here, all right? So special little ding, ding, side note here. And that is that sometimes this art of living with ease can be difficult for light workers. Okay. So light workers are souls that have been down here many times trying to assist the planet and helping the planet and helping humanity. And a lot of times light workers in the past, they came down here and they had really challenging lifetimes. They had uh, lifetimes of a lot of suffering and a lot of struggle. And that was partly because they were incarnating in 3D consciousness. And so that struggle is already imbued in 3D consciousness. And so light workers ended up having a lot of, of difficulties and suffering in their lives. Well, then a lot of, the, of us then incarnate in this new reality and we're bringing all of this from the past. We're bringing all of this energy from past lives and these beliefs and we're still living them out in this life, okay? So if you're a light worker, sometimes you can have a little bit of resistance to just the idea of living with ease because you can be saying to yourself, no, you know, life has to be, it has to be hard. And I'm saying this because this is something that I really had to work through too. In my understanding, I had a belief in my unconscious mind that a life of service was a life of sacrifice. I had this belief inside of me that I was only helping others and helping humanity if I was sacrificing myself. That was something I held for a really long time and I didn't realize that it was coming from this heritage of being a light worker and being down here so many times and I had to clear that belief from my energy system and to open myself up to living with more ease, to understanding that I can help others and that I can assist others without having to sacrifice myself. It doesn't have to be this kind of, I have to lose something for someone else to gain, okay? So this is really, really important. If you're a light worker, let go of this, of if you have any kind of unconscious beliefs that life has to be hard or that you have to sacrifice, let go of that unconscious belief. It's something that you're bringing from the past and it definitely doesn't have to apply now, especially in the energy of 2022. Now, if you want to go deeper on what 3D consciousness is and what 5D consciousness is, if you want to go deeper on these on these aspects of 3D and 5D consciousness that I talked about in this video, I shot a whole video on the topic. It's going to help you understand the difference between 3D consciousness and 5D and how to live more in 5D consciousness. I'll leave a link to that video in the description box below so you can watch right after this one. Now, I want to hear from you. Let me know in the comments below, are you feeling these 2022 themes? that I talked about in this video? Or are you feeling them already in your life? I want to hear all about it in the comments below. Click here to subscribe to my YouTube channel or head over to my website where you can buy tickets to one of my upcoming live events and check out this video that I talked about in this one. That'll be great for you to continue viewing. All right, beautiful soul. That's it for me. I love you. I'm out.